Okay, one. three, two, one. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It just gets more and more absurd. It's, it's ridiculous every time. at this point. Hey, this is Jen from the blog Noting Grace. And this is Trent from the blog Noting Grace. <laughs> And this is another episode of Your Home Renewed. Thank you so much for tuning into our podcast. This week, we are going to be talking about how to love your home. And this is going to be a four-part series. I figured Mm. February is American Heart Association Heart Healthy Month. I think I know a little bit about that. (laughs) Maybe just a little bit. We could talk about that. And then um, it's also Valentine's Day. So ah, let's focus on something. Two heart things. Two heart things. <clears throat> I bet that's probably why they chose February. I wonder. As the mm. heart health. There's some clever awareness. marketers out there. You think? Yeah. Maybe just a little bit. Mm-hmm. So the whole concept today in this four part series, today we want to talk about how you can love your home by focusing on what is good in your home. Yeah. So what does that mean? I think you focus on what is good in your home. And <laughs> thank you so much for tuning in. Yeah. And next week, we'll, no. Um, so yeah. let's elaborate on that. Okay. So um, let's say that you have a person who is really struggling to like where they live. And we have had homes where it has not been a mm. dream situation. Right. Um, we had our first apartment out in Los Angeles. We lived in a triplex. The walls were super thin. Mm-hmm. The owners lived above. They had a very large dog. We could hear the dog running all mm-hmm. over the floor. And we had to do recordings and yeah. voiceovers where it was a quiet environment. And sometimes the only time we could do it was to actually close ourselves <laughs> off. Do you remember that little we, hallway? Well, yeah. And we had that... Um bamboo rolling oh yeah like room divider thing yeah. and we would set that thing up and mm-hmm. then blankets over it yes and you were like in a childhood tent <laughs> like a, a tent. couch fort and then we ended up starting to record at like 1 a.m yeah. because everybody would be asleep yeah. so i mean you, yeah. we just had to make do with mm-hmm. what we had and so there were a lot of things about that apartment that we didn't love but but do you know that apartment is where we did our very first DIY together. It is mm-hmm. our bed. So see, um, our uh, we'd made a, a headboard. A headboard, yeah. and that's now in. This Ryan's is the universal room. signal for headboard. We made a headboard. Y'all got that? <laughs> um, yeah, we made a headboard, and so yeah, there and we you... didn't even have. So you know, it's a big piece of plywood, and we just had the small sedan that we oh, were driving. Yeah. In fact, yeah. We couldn't even haul the full piece of plywood, so we had to have the, you know, place cut it in half, even though we needed one solid piece so that we could fit it in the car, and then we put, you know, extra braces on it once That's we right. got because we didn't really have many tools no. or anything. It was just pretty, uh, pretty basic. Yep. Uh, and yet we still have that. We, we still, still have, have it. it, and it's downstairs. I don't know. It's endearing. I don't know if I'll get rid of it. Maybe we could put a picture of it somewhere in here. Right uh, here. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, that was a that's a great so, memory. Yeah, and you made um, what's the term? Cornice boards. Is that yeah. right? Good for yes. you. I'm reading, noting Grace so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you put those over the mm-hmm. windows, and we wrapped them in fabric. Mm-hmm. And do you remember what I made them out of? Uh, wood. I think I used, might have used foam core board. Really? I think I used something really, or if it was wood, it was like really thin mm. luon. It they were very flimsy. But luau. can you do that Hawaiian dance? <laughs> Not a luau. Not a luau. luau. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, so look at that. I mean, that was sort of the birth of yeah. Noting Grace back and then. And we did a faux finish on the walls. Oh, we did. I actually don't remember that. I just said we did. What is a faux finish? It was, um, we went with a kind of a glazed wall. In the it, main in room? In the main room. I just thought we painted it brown. We added, it, it was a textured type wow. finish. Mm-hmm. So far back, I can't remember. I know. That's I know. cool. 
So yeah, there we were. We of course got permission to do those of course, things. Of course. Uh, and I think they liked it and they were like, yeah. Hey, can we keep it when y'all move out? You know, that's right. Um, well, um, and we can talk about this again. So another part of the series, we're going to be talking about, um, working with what you can control and in a rental there are limitations. So we could go into more detail oh, about yeah. that in That's an true. upcoming That's true. episode. But uh, I thought to, to tie that in with our subject matter, you know, we weren't in the nicest apartment. No. But it sort of spurred us to get into what we do now. That's right. It's kind of the little seeds that were planted. So there was our finding the good and That's not right. the best situation That's ever. Right. Yeah. That's right. So that's cool. So uh, there's ways that you can, mm-hmm. some steps that you can take in order to try to find and focus on what you love, what you do love about your home. And mm-hmm. I think the number one thing would be to ask yourself, if I were to move, what would be the thing that I would miss hmm. most yeah. about this home? And so if you start focusing on something that you love about the home yeah. instead of always you know, thinking about the negative aspects yeah. um, of something that you don't have. Like, I mean, it can be something as simple as, I love cooking with a gas stove. This mm-hmm. house doesn't have gas, but I'm thankful that I can still cook meals. Huh. So just even shifting just a the focus. mind shift change. Yeah. Just to, to think about it in a way of... Right. Because I think, you know, when you're thinking more positively... Mm-hmm. And you find those uh, those things that you can uh, find joy yeah. with, then that kind of helps boost your attitude. So how do you find joy? What are some things that we that the person can do? So say that they've all they've done is focused on the negative aspect. What is something that they can do to actually start? Let's talk about what are some things that will help elicit that joy. Yeah. In the home, I think, okay. you know, one thing it would be um, if you have a favorite scent, buy a candle or oh, yeah. something that, that when you walk into the home, it smells like the favorite thing that you love. Yeah. So we're talking about things then that you may not be able to get into a big room makeover right? DIY project even though you really want to, but you know, timing's not right. Stuff mm-hmm. with the family's happening. You might have heart surgery or some strange thing that pops up and you can't dive in. Right. You can do sort of these things. That's right. So maybe a, a candle brings a, a nice smell mm-hmm. to the room and it's like, well, that way I'm not focusing on the negative aspect right. that ah, I can't get to this room yet. Well, and, and the smell thing is something in our own home. We'll go away yeah, for vacation. We've got two boys. <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> Three boys, if you count this one. I don't make sense. <laughs> Wait. Exactly. <laughs> That's a perfect faux pas. <laughs> Jeez. I need to get Sigmund Freud on the line on that one. But um, we have talked about, like, we'll come home from a vacation, and there's just that semi-old house smell. Mm. I mean, our house is more than 30 years old. Like, Grandpa's been hanging around too long. (laughs) (laughs) Grandpa, it's time to go home, man. (laughs) No, but it's just that musty smell. And so one way that we can combat that is to actually add... And incorporate scents that we love. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm still thinking about Grandpa. <laughs> you know, like Stay on task. Mothball necklace or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let's talk about another aspect. So I think it all I'm boils... I'm going to make my mascara run. <laughs> I think it all boils down to asking yourself... Just maybe the reasons <clears throat> why you are unhappy. Hmm. Yeah, address the, in your home some of the obvious things. So if your home is dark, well, do you open the curtains? So one way we combated having a darker house, we have the plantation blinds on mm-hmm. the windows. Yeah, and they were they were pretty from the outside. Yeah, and, and they and were high quality, super high quality. Nice so night. that yeah. was good, but. Um, 
you were like, I'm just going to take them down in our bedroom and see what happened. And then, oh. I mean, tons yeah. of light. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a th- very thick wooden edge yeah. all the way around that actually just really stopped blocks the light. a lot of yeah. light. Yeah. So we took them down in two other rooms and I mean, instant brightness happened yeah. and it made us love that room even more. Yeah. So, so you, yeah. some people probably would rather have the look of those blinds, mm-hmm. maybe. And so you may not want to part with that. Right. But we were willing to at least give it a shot and yeah. see if that would help. And it changed yeah. the whole thing. And even from the outside, now I like looking at the house and seeing right. a more uniform. I just like how it made the windows look outside. That yeah. was important too. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's not really, that doesn't take much time to do. Right. So you can change the entire look inside and out. By with rem- just one. Yeah, one little thing. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean. That was bigger than I thought it was. That's right. I mean, that was a giant change from right. inside to outside. Huge. Well, and so focus on maybe what the problem is. Try to find a, a solution. So if you feel like I can't sleep in this home, uh, there's a lot of noise, then invest in a white noise machine. Yeah. Or find some solution that it's too bright in my bedroom, well, then get blackout curtains. Yeah. Um, so Which is what we did. Yes, that's so what we that did. So that we could make it a little darker when we mm-hmm. needed it to be. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. But I think there's also other things that you can do that, that touch on the heart of the matter. Simple things like try to make memories, um, have a family movie night, hmm. or make meals at home. Or we talked about one time having those theme nights. Oh yeah. Um, for that can be fun, or you always have a dinner party, or invite your small group over, or something that that brings joy yeah. to your home. So I think that that's an element yeah. that you could try. Okay, so another thing you can ask: Are you able to relax in your home? Like, are you are you at peace in your home? What is the element that doesn't make it? peaceful. So let's say you run a hectic life. I mean, we are in such a hectic season of our lives that I think that multitasking is, you know, always work out for the best. No, generally it's a good idea. It may be a good idea because you think you're saving time, but, and you come to the room that you're always multitasking and you feel like I, I don't even enjoy spending time in this room. I try to avoid this room because this room always, causes me stress. Yeah. Okay, so what if you were to stop and slow yeah. down and maybe just pick one thing. Right. And just get that thing mm-hmm. done. So, as most of you know, I like a particular band and uh and so yes, we've also spoken about having a room right or two dedicated to said band. <laughs> and uh and so that's something you can do. Um, in your in your home that uh, could bring um, a bit of uh, your own personality, right? And you know, and it can be nicely done and, right. and that sort of thing. And that's something that if uh, if you don't have uh, the budget currently or something, you might look around and see some collectible things you have, mm-hmm. or it could be movies or. Well, and it doesn't have to be something thematic like a uh, band or a movie. It could be if you love daisies, incorporate daisies, or if you love mm-hmm. the color blue, add blue Just to your Just throw home. a bunch of daisies in the room. <laughs> Just toss them, huh? and then leave. Shut the door. <laughs> you don't need a daisy room. <laughs> No, but I mean, if it is something that you love, something yeah. that can reflect your personality, mm-hmm. um, even if it is music, yeah. uh, play music in your home. Mm-hmm. How many times has that changed? I mean, I have been sure. in a bad mood and the boys know they'll so come in that, and they'll sneak so around that, the corner and they'll hit the remote. The groove starts and she's like, I ain't mad. <laughs> I'm kind of mad dancing. <laughs> What is is that? there a word? What am I holding? A broom. A broom. <laughs> it could have been a mop. You don't know. But, you know, we have the word. I hold mops like this and brooms <laughs> like this. Do you have a particular no. grip? Okay. <laughs> it's getting weird. But uh, you've got the word hangry for when you're hungry and yeah. angry. Well, what would be, you know. Mangry? <laughs> angry music. Music, music angry? <laughs> My mangry. That's why I listen to, you know, some of the heavy stuff. Sometimes. No, the heavy stuff makes me angry. No, the heavy stuff 
No. Sort of pulls the anger out. No. And then suddenly you feel at peace. No. Yeah. <clears throat> it just fuels it works. the fire. Nah, it just adds that log. Nah. So we don't disagree on much, but we do disagree on that. That's right. Yeah. All in all, I think the main goal is counting your blessings, mm-hmm. being thankful for what you do have. And and if your living situation is absolutely the worst, you may have to bear down to the point where it's like, I have shelter over my head. Mm. I have windows and walls that are keeping the snow and the wind out. Mm. Um, it might be something as simple as I've got a blanket to keep me warm tonight. I mean, whatever that that shift in your mindset could be, yeah. um, we know that when we have a grateful heart, it elicits joy. Yeah. And and through that thankfulness, you can find joy in the sorrows and in the tribulations. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like um, Paul talked about, I count all of his trials and pains and whatever it was that he was going through, I count it all joy. Yeah. And I think that that's that process of being grateful mm. for whatever the circumstance is. I mean, when you were diagnosed with the coronary artery disease and you needed surgery, I mean, it was as if we were driving a van filled with fine china mm. and we slammed on the brakes and yeah. everything just crashed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we had to suddenly shift our mindset from, oh my gosh, our entire world is about to change to what a merciful God we have that mm-hmm. we were able to catch this before anything horrible happened. Mm-hmm. So so shifting that negative yeah. attitude toward your house, your home, your if, even if it's a, a difficult child or... Um, a marriage struggle, yeah. you might have to be <clears throat> thankful for that warm cup of coffee that's sitting mm. in your hand this moment, or your dog just laid his head on your lap and you can pet his sweet head. <laughs> I mean, it might have to be yeah. finding those tiny moments oh. that can help change the attitude. Mm. So focusing on the those good things around you, yeah, I think is key. Well, I think that's probably what we all miss living life is having a dog come up and put the, I'm so sorry, but we we can't have a dog. No, not today. I'm so sorry. Our other child is trying to sneak through (laughs) and uh, believe. Welcome to the podcast, Ty. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) All right. uh, But I mean, back to the dog thing. I mean, our boys did get us. The Christmas gifts. We got to tell everybody what mm. their Christmas gifts were for us. Um, so we had these two boxes, and one was one. The title said "Wink, Wink," mm. and the other label was "To Nudge, Nudge." Oh yeah, from the boys, and yeah. we opened them up at Christmas, and one was doggy treats, and the other was a squeaky toy. <laughs> Jeez, that's brilliant. It I is mean, we brilliant. have to. Give them credit and get them a dog for yeah. their ingenuity. No, until I had to crush their dreams and sa- <laughs> still say, that was clever, but still no. We're not anti-dog. We just, no. our last dog, we had a traumatic passing. Mm. So we're just not quite there yet. Yeah. Uh, I stepped in too much poop, and that's <laughs> where I draw the line. So it's, I love I, uh, the pets and the, <laughs> and the cuteness, all of that rules. But the dog poop and the hair everywhere was not my cup of tea. Mm. One of the things that I think we could all do better is fixing our minds on the things we're talking about. As far as looking around and just counting your blessings, like the old saying goes, um, even if you're not in the best of situation or if you're not in the best place, I mean, we have lived... In so many different apartments and homes and different things. And some of them have had awesome features. Mm -hmm. Some of them had not so great features. Right. Uh, Some of them were uh, really new. Some of them were really old Mm -hmm. and had those problems with it. But each one of them, I think we have a little small token of joy Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like, oh, do you remember that? Do you remember the little cutout where we put the little frog, frog band? Frog band. You know, and it's I hung like, like a little curtain, yeah. like as if it was, it was yeah. a, a niche in the wall, a little uh, cur- uh, arched yeah. little niche where I think the telephone used to sit. So yeah, it was like, like a night. Like the, hey, mur, mur, mur. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> mur, excuse me. Mur. Ethel Berman. <laughs> yeah. I'm not that old, but... <laughs> But it was where the phone would sit on the ledge. Yeah. And we, it had this little um, front bumper. So I guess whatever you set on it wouldn't fall off. Mm. But we thought of it as a stage. And we had these little cast iron frogs frogs that was like a piano, a drummer, a singer. Like some kind of violin or something. (laughs) And we set it up as like a little amphitheater. We cut out the curtains from something (laughs) and like made a whole amphitheater out of it. So, yeah, it was, um, so you do things like that. I mean, but if you look down at the floor, it was the vinyl from 1972 or something. And talk about that. You know, there was so much asbestos in that floor. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised I don't have a third hand coming out of my head. (laughs) But it's like, yeah. But there you go. That that was the juxtaposition that, well, that floor is ugly. But you know what? My eye is drawn to this frog band. You know, and every time we passed it in the hallway, it was like, hey, check that out. That's so neat. That's fun and goofy, you know. And, and, uh, but yeah, it's like a little small thing of joy. And so, yeah, we could have been depressed that we were, you know, um, kind of broke out in Los Angeles yeah. and, uh, you know, living in some, you know, an undesirable situation with the noise and all the things. But, you know, those, those are great memories. Yeah. And I wouldn't change those. And so we probably need to spend more time in those moments reminding ourselves that, hey, mm-hmm. you know, one of these days we're going to laugh at this or it's going to be a good memory for us or something like right. that. And that's how you can um, find the beauty in the things that are around you. Well, that's like my little beauty in the blemishes. Mm. We talked about the spittoon. Yeah. How, you know, we loved, you know, we still have to get that sp- We've gotta, spittoon. Uh, yeah, we'll do In show our first episode, we talked yeah. about how um, your family would turn the spittoon. Yeah, there's a spittoon that had a big bullet hole, pretty much a bullet hole. Uh, we talked about that. But anyway, bu- bullet hole in there. And so they hide it, whereas I think we would be like, mm-hmm. the bullet hole is the story. Now, I don't know what the story of the bullet hole no. is, but that's where you make up a really fantastical story and you tell your kids and mm-hmm. your grandkids and that, you know, I used it to block uh, somebody <laughs> shooting at me, and then I beat them up, and I was the victor, and I, you know, I'm this cool... I hope you don't ever tell Oh, I'm grandkids. telling the grandkids that the spittoon saved your grandpa's <laughs> life one day, and I... You're going to you know, just I'm going to call them up and say, meh, meh, see, I uh, blocked a bullet. Uh, <laughs> and, uh... Uh, anyway, but yeah, so the blemish is there and some people want to hide that blemish and, you know, uh, we would probably rather show the blemish cause mm-hmm. there's more story there. And, and that sort of ties into the thinking of, you mentioned, uh, Paul from, uh, in his letters to different churches, how he talked about, um, you know, I count all this stuff, you know, as, as, as joy, if we would rather show the beauty in the blemish, mm-hmm. because that tells more of a story and mm-hmm. that gives you a little bit of uh, something to think about. And so you might pass that item in your house and go, that reminds me of mm-hmm. where I was and where I am now. But if your mindset's not right or wrapped around the the, the order of those things, then you may have a, a little more negative outlook. Yeah. And so I think we're bad about not counting our blessings frankly yeah. well and i think that we we try in our society to hide or avert or totally avoid any mud puddles and yeah. struggles whereas you know you have this if you talk about how a caterpillar forms into a butterfly i read once where if you were to put a little slice in the chrysalis mm-hmm. the butterfly won't survive yeah. Because by using its wings to push against the chrysalis to actually emerge from mm. the from the cocoon or whatever it is, that's 
how it has the strength to be able to fly. Oh, yeah. And so if you don't go through the struggles, if you don't go through the blemishes, yeah. then you can't find. If you don't press against the resistance. Yeah. You can't find mm. the beauty. Yeah. So if you have a living situation that is absolutely abysmal, focus on the fact that there yeah. could be hope on the other side of it and, and focus on what is good yeah. about the home. Mm -hmm. And it may be nothing with the home but the yeah. people who are in it. There you go. There you go. I, I think that's a huge point because, yes, we like designing things and, and pretty things to hang and everything. But really, you know, if you focus too much on that, then, you know, you're focusing on the wrong things. Right. And if that's what you're concerned about, that you know, people come over and see the prettiest things that they've ever seen. That's probably not the no. the right, you know, foundation for things. So that gives us pause to go, well, I would much rather somebody come over and instead of saying, oh, it's it's so pretty, your house is so pretty. It's like, well, thanks, but yeah. wouldn't the compliment really be, I just feel so at home when I come here or right. I love hanging out with your family right. on this green shag carpet. <laughs> And they're like, I don't really care that it's still green shag carpet. That's right. That no one's changed out in forever. If you go over to somebody's house that's got some green shag carpet and they're throwing down some good times and giving you some good advice, mm -hmm. then sign me up for sitting on some green shag carpet. Well, and green shag carpet has come back around. Yeah. Well, that's true. So. Yeah. There you, you know. go. So our advice is <laughs> go and get the green shag carpet installed and suddenly everyone is going to come over. <laughs> or just wait long enough and the, the yeah. trend yeah, yeah, will come Yeah, that's right. Around. Or don't take it out of the house. It'll come back around. So, you know, we've talked about a lot of things in this podcast, meandered through some thoughts. Maybe you have some thoughts, uh, and we'd love to hear them. So please let us know. Please reach out. Let us know what you're thinking, what's on your mind, mm -hmm. what you're doing, um, how we can serve you better. Uh, if they're, if we're doing it right, if we're doing it wrong and we'll tell you that you're wrong too, uh, cause <laughs> she's the sweet comment. Uh, uh, thank you for commenting you rude person. And she never says the rude part. I'm like, you tell them, but no. So, but let us know, even if you're going to be rude to us, we're going to communicate with you. Oh. I will. We just love hearing from you guys yeah. and, and, and knowing what you're thinking and, and, uh, um, yeah, tell us, tell us some of your, your struggles and, and we can talk about those too. And, uh, thanks for, uh, watching and listening. And, um, you know, this has been a lot of fun for us and I can't wait to do the next one. Yeah. The next podcast yeah. will be focus on what you can control. Mm. So that will be an interesting one. Yeah. So these are kind of, kind of the next Four, we're going to kind of build on each other and we kind of set the foundation. The next three. The next four, including this one, <laughs> was really what I meant. Thanks for interrupting my speech part. So the next three podcasts are going to build on this one. We set the foundation for mm -hmm. looking around, changing your mind on some things, yeah. focus on the good stuff. And then we're going to move into. The folk, if you want to change some things, maybe what mm -hmm. you can and can't control. That's we'll right. We'll talk more about that. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. We always love to hear from you, so make sure that you leave us a comment, or you can also subscribe to us on your favorite podcast channel or on YouTube, and you will catch the next episode that comes out every week. Yeah, do all those things. All of them. All of them. Okay. Bye. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>